Okay, uh, that's it for presentations. Next up <clears throat> is council initiated discussion. You know it, you love it, you've done it before. Uh, you know this is where we uh, sort of turn the microphones over to you and we ask you for suggestions or recommendations of reports that you might want to hear either from the staff or invited speakers. Um, problems that you're hearing about in the community that you think should be brought to NHGRI's attention or basically whatever's on your mind. Now, I've sat through enough of these to know that very often you're throwing questions at Eric and he's obviously engaged and integrated at a very high level at NIH. I'm not privy to a lot of those conversations and meetings. So I may call on some of the division directors if I think they know something about your particular question. So we'll do the best we can without Eric. Do I have to start assigning homework assignments to you guys? Wendy. It just seems that today's presentations have been great in terms of seeing some of the plans for being able to put data in the data commons or in the ELSI commons, things like that. I'm just wondering what the plans are then for being able to support the research to do that, those analyses. In other words, um, it's going to be a real opportunity, I think, but that needs to be partnered with being able to have resources to do the analyses, and that's sometimes underfunded. V very valid point. What are you asking NHGRI to do? Brainstorm on that and come back to you with a report? Yeah, of some just, kind? Okay. yeah, you know, what are the plans and, and are there opportunities then to sort of tie in with this to make sure those opportunities aren't lost and that we don't lose any time? Okay. I guess another area that I'm naturally um, I'm thinking about is just. You know, how do you, because I actually think the presentations were super, and I really like to listen to the overview of the presentation. It gives you a much better perspective on what we're doing uh, on the grants. But, you know, long term, where are some of these programs going, right? How are they actually integrated into society at large? Uh, do they, you know, are we, do we think that many of them will be picked up and be self sustaining through the economy and through? you know, the medical community, or do we anticipate a number of them that will be going on for the next 30 years? And, and the only reason I say that is, is just, you know, a lot of times we talk about the priorities and there's a lot of promise on all these things. So the question is, can they actually be incorporated? And I'm, I'm not sure what I'm asking yet, other than as a theme, I'd be very interested to hear more about what, what people are thinking. So again, just so you know, every time it's Every time an RFA comes up for renewal, it does come back to the council. And we have a discussion with you, and uh, you vote on a concept to renew it. So you have, I don't want to say control over it, but at least um, the question is posed. Yeah, I know. But I mean, you guys have thought a lot about this for a lot of years. And it would be really interesting, you know, for the field in general to get a good perspective on this, uh, just because it puts everybody on common footing. So, you know, with every new. Uh, council member, you don't have to sort of rediscuss this. It'd just be useful. Um, yeah, so with the um, strategic planning coming up and the timing with the, I know the All of Us program has this RFA out for genome centers, maybe in September council it might be useful to get an update from them because um, I think the timing of the two initiatives is important. Yeah, from the, the All of Us program and what their plans are for the genome sequencing. Yeah, along those lines, I would like to hear more about what the plans are for the genome sequencing centers. And I, I guess that's coming up maybe in September or? Uh, there'll be a discussion closed session about that. We'll see if that satisfies your needs. Well, the, and I'm, Will there be like kind of regular formal updates? I mean, you were, you were asking about all of us getting an update. Will there, will there also be regular updates to council on the strategic planning process or other than what's in Eric's presentation, will there be like a dedicated discussion or something? So that same question was posed at the February council meeting. And I think the answer to it is um, 
as needed and when relevant. There hasn't been that much that's happened in the last three months, so you're not getting a specific report. But we are going to pretty quickly now get into the period of frequent workshops, and so you're, you're going to see the pace pick up. So would, I mean, would September be a good time for like a summary or too early still? Uh, I don't have the timeline in my There's mind. There's an update. I, I see Carolyn getting up to rescue me, so. Yeah, we had already talked internally about, so we have, I think for people who, who um, heard Eric's presentation in February, because this is open session, or people who watched the, um, the strategic planning um, town hall that's also available online. We have internally a set of focus groups, five focus groups, and we're moving along. We're going to have our first two town first two town halls in addition to the virtual town hall, and we've discussed sort of internally discussing in August a state of where we are after those initial town halls and other activities. So I think September would actually be a very good time for us to come and give you you all an update as well. Yeah, here's a request from uh, left field, but um, I've been kind of late to the whole notion of biohacking. And this seems to me to be uh, a significant threat, really a threat in a couple ways, threat to public health for uh, the creation of uh, organisms uh, in entirely unregulated environments, and really a potential threat to serious genetic uh, research and science uh, if uh, People do get hurt, and there's notions about how uh, this technology becomes uh, a threat rather than an opportunity. Um, you know, maybe this will turn out to be complete quackery and a fad, but I'm thinking that the power of these technologies and the relative ease and inexpensive nature of them really do pose a threat to uh, society that, uh, you know, I wonder whether the Genome Institute has a role in uh, taking seriously where society ought to be going with thinking about uh, uh, this sort of misuse of uh, these uh, technical tools. So, uh, you know, if others are interested, would there be an opportunity to hear what the regulatory gaps are uh, in our system uh, at this point that uh, um, folks are taking advantage of to explore, you know, genome technologies in their uh, uh, basements and bedrooms? So I would be interested in getting some updates on um, how the new T32s in genomic medicine. So we have T32s now in genomic science and genomic medicine, and sort of hearing back on how those are going, um, I, I think would be really useful because those, especially the one in genomic medicine, was a relatively new concept, and just getting an overview, um, I think, would be really helpful. So, uh, I, know I don't know, can somebody tell us when the first genomic medicine T32 was awarded? I don't think it's been, it's been two years. Okay. You may have to, or, or I can just repeat for you. Sure. So, you're saying there's seven? Oh, okay. Yeah, so there's seven applications, seven programs, and then the first ones were funded two years ago. Okay, so maybe some kind of report with summary statistics or success with recruitment and that sort of thing. It's an incredibly unique program, yeah. and um, I just I think just hearing about what the successes and what the challenges, challenges are and stuff successes and, and solutions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I, I also think to Jeff's point, the whole you know, this to me this issue about biohacking, it goes to to literacy of the public in genomic science and, you know, genomes and society. And I know there's a lot of activity in NHGRI around that, so maybe addressing that specifically maybe is too narrow, but the, the broader the broader area of, of how to raise literacy in general without <laughs> engineering bugs that will take over the world. Is, I think it's an important topic. And are there research opportunities there? I mean, we're not a law enforcement or regulatory agency. We sponsor research. So is it, is there a need to study it further? 
Yeah, great question. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't claim to know enough about it. I think it's so uh, rapidly moving. But you know, I've just seen. I've just seen seen things emerge uh, in the popular press, really, just in a relatively short period of time, uh, about this. And I'm learning that there's whole conventions of people who were uh, engaged in these activities. Um, and so, uh, a, a landscape sort of research project might well be worthwhile to sort of see uh, who's out there, who's doing what, what's the nature of the claims being made, et cetera. Yeah, I don't know exactly what the request is, but I work with a lot of uh, physicians that are very good at clinical evaluation of patients. And when we hear things like the undiagnosed disease program, uh, the intramural program, the clinical center here, uh, <clears throat> I think it's fantastic, but I also think it's biased that we're hearing the one side of it. And, and uh, <laughs> so what I'm, I'm not sure who you would invite to talk about this, but I'm wondering if uh, having other uh, institute directors come that might have uh, different perspectives, either ones that work closely with NHGRI or ones that have sort of shied away to see what their perspectives are. So when you say biased, you mean too much emphasis on the molecular genetic lesion, not enough on the phenotyping and diagnostic? Yes, as if the, the uh, genetic testing was the whole answer. It wasn't. And there's cases out there that are advertised as such very prominently when in reality, the clinical the geneticist looked at the patient and knew what they had. And we don't hear about that. We hear about, oh, they did a whole exome or, and found uh, the disease-causing variant. From my perspective, this is a long enough action item list between now and September Council, so I think I'll call this to a close, okay? Uh, okay. So to finish up, uh, just a few more administrative things. We have uh, two reports from our uh, liaison societies, the National Society of Genetic Counselors quarterly update and the American Society of Human Genetics report to Council. These are events that have been sponsored by these uh, societies, uh, and if you're interested um, in, in those, the activities of the societies, I recommend these reports to you. Uh, I'm now going to read the conflict of interest charge, and this applies to all of the applications that will be reviewed in the closed session. So, um, you must leave the meeting room when applications submitted by your own organization are being discussed, individually discussed. In the case of state higher education or other systems with multiple campuses that are geographically separated, own organization is intended to mean the entire system, except where a determination has been made that the components are separate organizations for the purpose of determining conflict of interest. You should avoid situations that could give rise to charges of conflict of interest, whether real or apparent. For example, you should not participate in the deliberations and actions on any application from or involving your spouse, child, a recent student, recent teacher, professional collaborator with whom you've worked closely, close personal friend, or a scientist with whom you've had long-standing scientific or personal differences. NHGRI staff will determine the appropriate action based on recency, frequency, and strength of such associations or interest, either positive or negative and will instruct you accordingly. In council actions in which you vote on a block of applications without discussing any individual one, the so-called on-block action, your vote will not apply to any application from any institution fulfilling the criteria noted above. 
Now, in your folders, there should be an actual a hard copy document. Please sign that, and they'll be collected at the break between the open and the closed session. So the last order of business is uh, I want to take a moment uh, to acknowledge our uh, program analysts at NHGRI. Uh, as the Council is well, well aware, there are several very large consortium-like activities, uh, research activities that NHGRI sponsor. And it's an awful lot of work uh, to manage those consortia, uh, generally weekly phone calls, uh, lots of reports lots of tracking of production activities, lots of action item lists, and uh, follow-ups that come from that. And I don't think that our program directors want to contemplate uh, a life, or at least a working situation, without the uh, support of their program analysts. Now, these analysts come to us for a two-year tour of duty. They're all college graduates that uh, want a different experience or some time off before going off to their next educational experience. So um, it's time to graduate a class of them, and I want to uh, acknowledge them uh, as a group. Uh, I will tell you that they're off to MD-PhD programs, to graduate school, uh, to medical school, uh, to genetic counseling programs, and um, even uh, an opportunity in the intramural research uh, program. So uh, they've worked very hard for two years. Um, they're a very dedicated bunch. Uh, and they're accomplished by virtue of where they're going next in life. So when I call your name, would you please stand? Aaron Curry. Sarah Gould. Oh, let's save it for the end, please. Uh, Sarah Gould. Uh, Ellen Howerton. Jeff Kim. No, stay up, you guys. Stay up. Aaron, get up. Melky Kasapi, Sam Moore, Laura Scow, and Margaret Ganoza, who left us last week. So uh, congratulations, class of 2018. <laughs> and for the council in September, I'll be introducing you to the new class of recruits that come in generally over the summertime. Okay, let's take uh, 15 minutes uh, to break this. Oh, that's the official end of the open session. We're going to take a 15-minute break to take down the cameras. We'll come back to review a few applications in closed session. Thank you.